Today's horror films look more realistic than at any other time in the history of cinema. This is due in part to the growing talent of the special effects artists. Using exotic plastics, fiberglass, and latex foam, special effects artists take images that could only exist in the mind and bring them to life. Their talent lies in the ability to take those things that are hiding under the bed or lurking in the shadows and bring them out into the open for us to see. At the KNB Effects Group Studio in Los Angeles, breathing life into our darkest fears is the order of the day, every day. Made up of Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotero, and Howard Berger, KNB has a nine-person staff working around the clock on some of today's most popular horror films. Watch closely. These men want to scare you. On this side of the shop is uh, where we do all the mechanical um, things that make our, our creatures come to life. What this does here is it, it's a slave unit that uh, reproduces his jaw movement, translates it to the movement of the puppet, so the puppet duplicates his exact movement. Basically, the radio unit is hobbyist RC radio equipment and placed in their own bosses, so it makes it easy for our fingers to work eight different controls at one time. Don't forget, it's only a movie. In front of the camera, these puppets come to life. What you don't see on screen is the mechanical tools that make them move. For Bride of Reanimator, KNB designed a glove that slips over the assistant's arm. Whenever the director wants, the head can pull away from the body. For Horror Show, a puppet was built for an electrocution scene wire all those detonators up to a, a charge box and the special effects guy would hit the detonator and sparks and fire shoot out of his face and everything. A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5 demanded something a bit more surreal. From this stage we go to this stage um, the head swing around and hit the camera and when we pull back out it's a different head every time and this at this point Freddy has stretched out of Alice's face and their tongues are connected and all their flesh is connected. This is the last stage then um, where Freddy is actually uh, just about ready to snap out of Alice's face and when he does they change, she changes back to Alice and he changes into Freddy. This is for a film called Intruder. Um, Scotty Spiegel who co-wrote Evil Dead 2 uh, is his first directing project. This is a head that we, we actually cut on a bandsaw and throw the actor down and then we cut to this and there was a camera mounted above and on the side and we'd push it across and it was filled with um, big blood bags. So blood and meat started going up the side of the, the blade and it was pretty messy. This is the, actually the head before we cut it in half. Each face which is cast for a puppet gets its own space on the wall. Lance Henriksen, who plays Detective Lucas McCarthy, is having dinner with his family. He's being plagued by hallucinations by this serial killer, Max Jenke. So he's having his big turkey dinner with his family, and he looks down, and suddenly the turkey is not a normal turkey anymore, but it's this weird mutated thing. So what we did was we sculpted it so that the killer's face was growing out of the side of the turkey. The whole thing could breathe, had little air bladders in it, it could talk. Um, one of the turkey legs actually had human fingers on one, and we also had a, uh, a bunch of tentacles that came out. Night Angel, which as far as I understand, is all, the name has been changed now to Deliver Us From Evil, directed by Dominique Girard, who I'd worked with on Halloween 5. We did Night Angel first. There's a sequence where this demon is born and it, she takes the shape of a female, so they built this strange set where she was able to climb out of a hole in the ground. We covered her entire body. We, she had a hand prosthetic on, and we covered her entire body with pieces of latex and, and hot melt vinyl to simulate a, a translucent kind of skin, like she's shedding her skin, and underneath is this, is this beautiful female. Mark? All right, what we have here is there's another sequence in the same film where 
um, one of the characters is in bed with his girlfriend, and he turns around, and suddenly she has transformed into Lilith, this evil character, and all these snakes shoot out of her mouth and bite onto this guy's face. So um, Bob designed a makeup, wh which were uh, uh, several prosthetics so that we could actually get a, to be able to attach some fake snakes onto the guy's face and he could pull them and the skin would stretch. It was, looked like they were actually biting into his face. Um, this was a very tricky sequence because there were a lot of camera tricks involved. We did a lot of reverse photography where you put the snake on his face, roll the cameras and pull it off. And then when they flip the film backwards, the thing comes, looks like it's coming down to bite him on the face. We also had uh, um, oversized hand puppets that were like snakes that uh, we could do lunges at the camera with to intercut. We also did a, a dummy head of a Lilith, which we could actually shoot the snakes out of her mouth. And action. Snake. Good. Shot. Yeah. Reading your right for A. Two is up. That's all you remember about the fucking action. That's it. Go. Shut up. This is Mark and I, Mark Matry and I applying Michael Myers' hand appliances. Michael Myers, the shape is played by Don Shanks, uh, a, a local Utah stuntman. Every time that we saw the shape, he had burned back of the hand appliances on to uh, maintain continuity from the other films. The other films, he, he was burned in the end of part two and had been shot about 50,000 times, stuff like that. Um, anyway, with Dominique, he always wanted to see tests. So what we did was we had an extra head. This, the, we have a couple tests here. You can see some they don't work quite well. Other times they do. The blood tubing here is hooked on the instrument. As the instrument goes in, the blood is pumped, and it looks like it's coming out of the fake head when it's actually coming out of the instrument itself. Um, this was the we were you know by the time we got it to this fourth test, we figured that we were pretty happy with it and got it to the point where. Um, the director saw it and was very pleased. And there it is, the art of terror, as described by the K&B special effects group. Here at the front office of their studio, producers and directors deliver the ideas which are turned into reality. Images from under the bed or lurking in the shadows brought into the light for us to see. And what nightmarish images could these possibly be? What fiendish demons are K&B preparing to unleash upon the world next time?